everybody. So this is just a theory. This is just what I'm looking at um, based on this whole idea of us being the image of our Father. When we have the Holy Spirit, when we have this wisdom, we become one with the Father. That's what Yehoshua told us to do. But the fall of man is somehow related to mankind not loving wisdom and loving folly instead. And so when you chase after folly, the adulteress, you are cheating on your wisdom and that leads to death. So the majority of the people today are chasing after folly and not trying to court wisdom as per Proverbs 8. I have another video on how I have been believing that maybe we are in the black cube seeing through a glass darkly, which means we can't see through this blackness. This black here in the front would represent this blinder we have from what's up above us. And, you know, we see the stars at night. It's black. There's a couple of lights, but it's black. And so to show you better what I mean here, I'm going to take away this layer and sort of make it a little bit more clear. Here we see water because there's waters above the firmament dome of the flat earth. And I kind of made this so that the iris here, I've been debating about that, uh, about the Masonic flat earth videos I've done. You can see that, but I'm thinking, you know, maybe that is like the pupil of our eye, you know, the, the flat earth is like the iris um, and the pupil is inside and when there's a lot of light, the pupil gets really, really small, but when there's a lot of darkness, the pupil gets really big. And so the more darkness there is on the earth, then the larger the hole, and this is supposedly where the abyss is in my way of thinking. So the more dark it gets, the larger the abyss opens up. And that, of course, goes along with everything we read in scriptures. That everybody's going to, you know, sin more and more, and it's going to get dark and dark, you know, darker and darker. And then that's when the abyss is opened. So that goes along with the idea of the pupil. If it was really light, if everything was shining brightly, the pupil would have no need to be open. It would be very tiny. So once again, you see that the abyss would be closed if there was a bunch of light on Earth. If we believe in the opposites, where we are the mirror image, if this here was a mirror and somebody was looking into the mirror, they're seeing this like an eyeball. As you can see, the Antarctica is like the whites of your eye surrounding the pupil. So if this is a mirror, then there may be something on the other end looking into the mirror. So this would be the New Jerusalem, and there could be another landmass, uh, an eyeball, so to speak, looking into this black mirror. If you think of it like a man looking into a black mirror, you s just imagine him being very close and you just see his eyeball looking at an eyeball inside the black mirror. Then you're seeing your reflection, but it's reversed and it's dark. It's not showing the true reality of you because you're bright, but you're seeing yourself in the dark mirror. So I was thinking, what if the New Jerusalem is, you know, looking into this black mirror here? See how it can be like one eyeball landmass looking at another eyeball landmass in a mirror. I was trying this bath of uh, Condi's crystals, basically, uh, somebody had said it was really good for getting rid of parasites. 
and it'll stain your tub. I mean, you have to clean it very carefully afterwards, but um, I was doing that and it was just so dark and I looked down and I was like, wow, that's like a black mirror. And I was looking down at water. So I was thinking, okay, like the waters of the earth are like this black mirror. <clears throat> Sorry. The waters of the earth is like this black mirror that our father is looking down on. In scripture, the water refers to the peoples, the multitudes, the nations. And it's very dark and it's very uh, waving, like being tossed and fro about with every wind of doctrine. You know, they're not giving back the pure reflection of our father. It's darkened. It's not, you know, still. It's not giving a good reflection of our father. And I feel like he's trying to clean you know, our, what some people would call a cage, our cube. He's trying to clean it and make it new. And I was thinking with those tanks, sometimes you've seen the pictures of a tank of a really dirty water, you know, and somebody wants to clean it up. And so they put the bottom feeders in there, you know, the unclean animals. And when you put the unclean animals in, they suck up all the dirt. You know, and I was thinking, well, how would you make this cube light again? If you were putting in the bottom feeders all these unclean animals, could it be like the abyss opening up and sending forth the Nephilim or the unclean spirits into the world, and the unclean spirits are going to sort of purify the earth? I've talked about this before, like the Nephilim would eat humans, whereas humans would eat animals and those who would not stop eating animals they love their flesh then what's going to get them to stop well if the nephilim were sent upon them to try to eat them they might regret the fact that they were eating animals because the same thing is happening to them now they're in the same place so we're told that when we become like him we're going to see him as he is and also the the sky is going to be rolled up like a scroll and you know, I just have to wonder what is actually going to happen. You know, I'm just throwing out ideas, basically discussing, you know, the kind of thoughts that go through my mind. And I've also been looking into the fact that this universe might be like a holographic universe, as people have said, where basically we started out as the primal Adam, Adam, and he split off and we're... A copy of a copy of a copy basically but the holographic universe says that when you cut a piece of a hologram you can still see the exact same thing in that hologram on both pieces then and you can keep cutting it and you'll still be able to see the entire you know hologram in each piece no matter how small you cut it to infinity and I was just thinking about this you know this image of the New Jerusalem looking at, you know, this black mirror sort of idea and how it kind of reminded me of the Tesseract and the Tesseract is, you know, moving. So it, this is just like a still image sort of idea. I'll, I'll leave links below to more, you know, if you've never heard about the Tesseract or the Hypercube, then, you know, you can see that. But I'm just kind of wondering if, it isn't, if our universe, if our reality isn't just that our father is continually looking at a mirror, and it's actually just sort of reflecting back, back and forth, but also, you know, in the, in the video for Justin Timberlake's mirrors, you can see that he's looking into a mirror, and he sees himself when it's black. But when a light goes on, he can see the woman in the other side, looking back at him, you know, instead of his reflection. And I'm just kind of wondering if that's what is going on, you know, in some way that when you're looking in a black mirror, you're seeing yourself, you know, more evil, though. You know, you're not quite seeing the good in you, but... um when the light shines in, then you're seeing your yourself with the good. Um, 
in the video from Justin Timberlake of Mirrors, you know, you can sort of see his reflection, but you also see the woman. And that way you're seeing, you know, wisdom in yourself. You know, if the woman represents wisdom like Eve represented wisdom for Adam. So when the light comes on, you can see yourself and wisdom in yourself. But when it's dark, you only just see yourself and you can't see the wisdom. And that's sort of like what this world is right now, that black cube is humanity without wisdom. But when the light comes on, you'll see humanity with wisdom inside. And, you know, I keep thinking about how when we were separated from wisdom in some way, then that's when evil came in and it just got worse and worse and worse because people were led to more and more folly because the more you sin, the more you're led to sin more. And um, yeah, these are just the thoughts that are going through my mind and hopefully I'm explaining myself okay. At the end of Carry to the Rage, you see an image here of a man looking in a mirror and you know, you can't see the man who's actually looking in the mirror, but you see his reflection and then you see that his reflection is reflected and it just goes on into infinity. Although it's funny that they have the sign here that says infinity's end. And there's no end to this infinity. And I'm kind of wondering if we aren't in just some sort of mirror, mirror mirroring itself back to itself over and over again to infinity um, with a tesseract type idea. But something interesting also is that there's an image of the girl here. And so you see when he sees his reflection, he sees the girl. So that's kind of the same idea. He's seeing himself and the girl who's a part of him. But of course in the movie, she's died. And so that kind of represents humanity without wisdom. Wisdom has died. You know, obviously they, they try to flip things around. Um, also, if you go back to this sort of image with the New Jerusalem being on top of this cube, then, you know, the dimensional travel is always through water and mirrors in uh, all the movies and things. Chris and I have talked about that. You can see the live chat we've done on that. But so if you were to go from here to the New Jerusalem into another dimension, it would go through like a mirror. And that's just, once again, the idea that there's another dimension above us. And of course, people tend to think that we're trapped here in this cube, but, you know, in a hypercube, there's actually no limits on time. When you go into the fourth dimension, you can choose what time you want to go into. So yes, we are stuck right now in the third dimension, but I think that we're here for a purpose, that we are experiencing time for a purpose. I don't think that people came here and got stuck um you know, against their will. I think that we're here, you know, purposefully. And I think that the whole point, um, Yehoshua told us to become one with the Father is because we're warring against ourselves, that we're basically all a part of this holographic universe and we're all each other. But when you see another as an individual, you sort of feel like competition or fighting against yourself, you know, and I think it's basically us sort of experiencing ourselves. Yehoshua told us to love each other, you know, forgive your enemies and treat each other as if it was you. So why did he say that if it wasn't, you know, we're supposed to treat each other as if it's ourselves and how you would want to be treated. And so I think that's basically the idea. Um, and that we are supposed to get back to being one with each other. And you can see when you look at the world today that people are being programmed to hate the unknown, to fear the unknown, to not want to discuss ideas. They've actually been brainwashed to not consider another idea, this whole world. They were basically born into a cult that says, you know, that these people are against you and 
you have to fear them or fight them or worry about them stealing from you and all that stuff, um, you get told that that's basically what you're born into and that, you know, you have the right way. And if you're a Christian, then you can't consider this different interpretation of this. You know, you can't consider that the Bible is not the word of God. As I've said, of course it's not because they had the word of God before the Bible was written, you know, according to scripture. So people get brainwashed into these, you know, control mechanisms by the system. And so, you know, if that's what they want you to think, what's the opposite of that? Well, the opposite of that is that everybody is you, that you should be loving each other as yourself because you are yourself when you are speaking with them. And that's why those seven of seen mirrors are reflecting back against ourselves, you know. Um, so these are just my thoughts and I could change my opinion. I'm just sort of putting the thoughts out there and see what you think. Um, thanks for listening and shalom.